Welcome back to Jacques in the Garden. Today we're going to be talking about my chicken coop. And it's one of these questions that I get the most frequently. Something that people want content on the most is chickens, how to raise chickens, how to care for them. And so before we really get into more of that side of things, let's talk about how to actually build a coop and what features and design considerations we made when we built our coop from reclaimed scrap lumber. So before we uh, get too deep into the design video, oh, hey, Tefra. I wanted to give a shout out to Katrina, my girlfriend, who she's the one who actually came up with the design behind this. She's the one who looked up all the requirements that the chickens need. And I just helped basically put it all together. Of course, I did make a lot of contributions in terms of how to use reclaimed wood and put this actual idea. But we did build it together and she's the one who came up with all the designs. So a big shout out to her and a thanks. Before we get into some of the details of the design considerations, let's talk about some of the basic things that needed to exist in this chicken coop. So what you're looking at is the front, and this is a south facing wall. And what you're seeing is up here, these are some reclaimed boards that what we've done is we've covered them in a spar urethane designed for outdoor use. And below that are cabinet doors. So we got these cabinet doors from a garage sale. They're just basic kitchen cabinet doors that we've repainted and repurposed for the purpose of actually our clean out point. So when I say clean out, inside here, right here is the floor point of the interior of the coop. And this is actually a pallet um, that the whole structure is sitting on. So this is the floor line and inside the floor line up to maybe about the top of this board is entirely filled with litter. In this case, the litter is a triple screened wood shaving. So that's sitting in this bottom surface and that's where the chickens are gonna poop all night while they're sleeping and anytime they're in there. And so this is actually a deep litter method coop. And what that means is that you fill in a initial layer of litter and after that you keep continuously adding layer and after about six months you clean everything out and you compost that and put in fresh litter. The really nice thing about that is that for those six months, all you're really doing is occasionally getting something like a fork or a rake and mixing it up in there maybe once a week. And then when things are starting to get a little stinky or it looks like they're getting very soiled, you just throw in some more wood shavings. So it's really convenient because it's really easy to manage. So as we get ready to take a look inside, I'm gonna actually talk about some of the security features. And when I say security, that's probably the most important thing you should think about when you're building a coop. It really depends on where you live and what sort of predators are around you. In our case, we're in a, we are in a urban environment. So our main predators are things like raccoons, possums, skunks, and coyotes. So in San Diego, we actually do have a lot of coyotes. They live even in the urban areas, they're off in the canyons and we've seen some in our street before. So that's definitely a consideration when we built this. But the biggest one in our case is raccoons. They are very smart, very strong, and very determined in getting their meals. So I'm gonna be mentioning some security features as we go. First thing you'll see is this crazy barricade. It's like a <laughs> castle wall barricade protecting. And the idea is that even if these doors were to try to open, they're not gonna go anywhere because they're gonna hit this barricade. So if you're a raccoon and you are smart, you might be able to open this carabiner here. And actually another tip is that carabiners are considered to be one of the more secure things to use. Um, but the raccoon's gonna first have to get this carabiner off. Then it's gonna have to open this latch right here, open the doors, but before it does that, it actually has to move this entire two by four. So that's the purpose of this two by four is that it's a kind of last ditch security effort. The really nice thing about it is that it's really easy to just kind of slide off. You don't even have to take it off all the way. You could just go halfway, like in this case. And um, these are called barricade bar holders, I believe. So that's what you want to look for if you want to use something like this. Um, it's especially nice since we repurposed everything. We wanted to have the ability to not worry about the security of the repurposed wood. Um, and that barricade bar really provides us a lot of peace of mind. So as I open this door, I'll point out a couple things. Uh, first, I have these little magnetic locks here. That's to kind of make sure that this door doesn't just pop open very easily. It's a little extra piece of protection. It's mostly for ease, honestly. Um, and the other thing I'll point out is that there's a piece of wood right here. And the purpose of that is that when this is closed, there's quite a significant gap because everything here is repurposed wood, repurposed doors. So nothing really fits perfectly. 
And so by putting this little piece of wood here uh, behind the door, it acts as a draft stopper. So chickens really are very cold hardy in the sense that they can handle very cold temperatures, but they don't like drafts. So you wanna make sure that while insulation isn't the biggest deal, draftiness is. So you wanna to try to limit that as much as you can. So I'll go ahead and pop open this door. And what you'll see is all the, the litter I was mentioning earlier. So over time it does compact and sort of smush down and you can see there's quite a lot of poop. <laughs> and the uh, interesting thing about chickens is that they seem to chew something and stick to it. So they all like this particular roost and everything back there almost never gets used. <laughs> so this entire coop was built for the purpose of giving them plenty of space and they're only literally using this part right here. Almost nothing at all happens back there. So what they'll do is they'll sit here and all night they'll poop. And one of the craziest things is that chickens poop a lot, a lot more than I ever thought they did. And it's kind of incredible. So that's kind of what the deep litter looks like. I'll say that in here, some of the other considerations we made is that we have this floor, which is a pallet with plywood sheets on top. The plywood and all the sidewalls that you see in here are coated in a spar urethane. That's to make it waterproof. It's to make sure that the wood can handle the excess moisture from all the bedding, from all the pooping, anything like that. So if you do have um, unpainted wood or you're using straight wood, I would highly recommend doing a spar urethane coating on everything you have. Uh, for everything else that you see, it's just exterior paint. But anything that's raw wood does have the spar urethane coating on it. Another critical security feature for your chicken coop is a predator curtain. And the way this works is that you get PVC coated welded wire fence. You want PVC coated because it's on the ground so the coating is going to protect it from rusting faster. And what this is, is that it's two feet of welded wire fencing on the ground. So the reason why it's here is that there's a lot of predators, things like raccoons or skunks, will actually dig to get underneath into your coop and actually coyotes as well, I should say. Um, and this stops them from digging. So if they were to come here and they would try to dig, they're gonna hit this and they're not gonna be able to get any progress. And then they're gonna wanna step back and try to do it from a further point, but they're gonna have to go two feet back and dig a two foot tunnel underground to get into your chicken coop. So that's gonna stop anything except maybe the most determined animal on earth from getting in there. It's very easy to put together, so I highly recommend it. Maybe it'll add something like a $30, $40 cost to your coop depending on where you could get this welded wire and for how much. Um, but the way it functions is that we have this piece of wood that wraps all the way around the structure and that's only there to secure this hardware cloth to it and to secure the predator apron to it. So every other square, or every three squares I believe, is a staple shot around the welded wire fencing into the wood. And on the outside, on the ground level, is a landscape staple maybe every foot or so. So that's to stop this whole thing from being lifted and for something to just go right underneath. I would say that this is essentially a mandatory thing, depending on where you are, of course, but it's such a nice peace of mind and it really was one of the easiest things to install for this whole build. Now we've seen a lot of the main features on the front of the coupe here, so let's go ahead and pop inside. Um, first, I'll, no I'll make a little note, just because it bothers me too, is that this post, should be going this way to support the gate. Um, technically, that's the right way to do it. But in this case, this isn't actually really supporting any weight, honestly. This is all just one by ones. So I'm not really worried about it. So I'll come in and there's a spring now so that this gate closes automatically behind me. And it's not the, you know, it's not a masterwork. It's U posts in the ground with two by fours attached to it and that's what's actually holding this whole gate. It doesn't have to do much, it only has to hold chickens back. So we'll come in here now and we'll take a look at the nesting box and some of the other security features over here. So as we're looking at this side of the coop, there's a couple main features, the biggest of course being the nesting box. Um, this nesting box was repurposed from a, like a little kit chicken coop that we found on Craigslist, somebody was trying to get rid of. We were going to use that originally, but we determined that honestly the build quality and the use case was entirely garbage. It was way too small, way too flimsy, and we kind of just junked it, but we did save the nesting box to save us some time so we didn't have to rebuild it ourselves. The other thing that I'll point out is that I have a little cooling fan here. This is really, this is connected to a solar panel. Right now it's not connected because it's not hot, but it provides a little extra airflow in the hotter months. 
Um, this whole structure is designed so that the high point has the most ventilation. And here you can see hardware cloth, and that hardware cloth actually wraps around here too, because you want to make sure that nothing like a mouse or a rat can actually get into your coop itself. So that's another reason why the hardware cloth is very important. So this is going to provide ventilation. It's the highest point, so as the heat naturally rises, it only has one way to go, and that's out. Again, everything that can open has a hasp and latch, and also has a carabiner. Carabiners are tricky for things like raccoons to open, which is why we're using them. We would have to open this and then also manage to get it off the hook. And then we would also have to know to open this hasp up. So that's the kind of double security feature there. Um, but let's bring the camera in a little closer and I'll show you exactly what it looks like here. And actually, it looks like we have a little egg too. One thing I really want to add is a way to secure this up here so I don't have to manually hold it. So when you open this up, you'll see that there are two separate nesting sites. It's important to have at least two. Most people have said, and we also found to be true, that the chickens will actually end up probably only using one. So this is the one that they end up using the most, and this is an egg from our chicken sweet potato. So that's the Rhode Island Red. She's the most consistent layer, um, but she is sort of the least friendly of the bunch, I would say. Um, but I'll leave this here now. I don't want to put it in my pocket and forget about it. Um, but you always want to have the two options because otherwise they will fight over it. But if there's only one that they like, they will use it. On occasion though, the chickens have used this nesting box as well. So basically, long story short, have a minimum of two, but don't be surprised if they only use one. Now we're at the entrance of the run itself. Um, so a couple of things I'll note really quick is that that predator current that we talked about is on this side as well. It's around every single part of this coop. Um, you'll see a couple different things here. You'll see that there's this little block of wood here and that's to stop the door from kind of pulling open here. So this is an extra security feature, very high tech, a piece of wood with a screw in it. You just move it out of the way when you want to open the door. Um, the other thing is that we have a carabiner and you go ahead and open that carabiner, you lift this and you swing it back down on the other side and you could leave your carabiner there. So that's the secondary security feature. And then I personally got paranoid that something can come down here and sort of wiggle this door open because it is a door that's made out of just one by twos. It's not the strongest thing in the world. So I put the cinder block here as the third and final security feature. That way, even if something were to pull on this, it would hit the cinder block. So the security might seem a little over the top, but for us, it's important. We never want anything at all to happen to these lovely ladies. So security is our number one concern when it comes to this coop construction. Just keep that in mind. And uh, actually, I think they're all pecking at the door because they want to get out. So we could go ahead and swing this open. <laughs> yep, yeah, they all came running out. So while they're out here pecking around, uh, is the perfect opportunity for me to show you inside here. So I'm gonna go handheld in here because it gets a little tight. So let's go ahead and pop in. I'm gonna point out a couple different things as we go. First of all, the easiest way to do this kind of enclosed structure is to have your posts and your wood beams and then you want to do the hardware cloth from the inside. That way you could do the overlaps on a piece of wood like this. So this is one piece of hardware cloth that comes up from the ground to here, and then a second piece starts and that goes up to the roof. So if you were to try to do it any other way, it'd be really hard to secure it. But with the wood, you just shoot a bunch of staples right into the hardware cloth. This is secure. <laughs> Nothing's gonna be able to rip this out. Um, over here, we have our food bucket. Um, I could try to find the link to what this is. It's been working out okay. It's basically a kit that is designed so that you get a five gallon bucket, and you cut out a hole and you pop this guy in. It's this elbow of PVC. So what happens is the food will settle in here. The chickens will poke their head in and peck the food out. And to refill, all you have to do is get in your bucket and dump some new food in. So that's been working all right. I will say that we lifted it off the ground so it's not too low, but I think well, I know what's going to happen next is that we're going to actually just go ahead and hang this on a uh, piece of string. And the nice thing about that is that we have these two by fours on the roof. So we'll just hang it from that. And the reason why is I'll tell you a couple different stories is that the other day 
we actually found a rat in here. So that's really bad. Um, that made us feel really bad because a rat in there means that it's pooped in there. We have to throw out all that food. And a rat getting stuck in your chicken coop can be quite bad because while well, the chickens are in their coop and sort of sitting on their roost, they can get nibbled at by the rats overnight. So that's really quite a bad thing that we discovered. And the two things we're gonna do to solve that is we're gonna lift the bucket off the ground to make it harder. But also, what you'll see is that to save money, we decided to use welded wire fencing on top. And that's to just make sure that nothing can get in here. But what can get through here are rats. And that's something we didn't think would be a problem. Obviously, that was a little naive. You try to save a couple bucks <laughs> to skip it, and now your life is a lot harder because you have to figure out how to get hardware cloth everywhere on this coop. So that's what I've been working on lately, is just throwing on a second layer of hardware cloth across the whole surface. I'm doing it with bits and bobs of hardware cloth that we have laying around to try to still save some money just because we have a lot of excess little pieces that are cut. So you'll see that they're stitched together by wire here. But basically, if you want to make sure that your coop is entirely safe, just do hardware cloth everywhere. And then you never have to worry about it. It will cost you a little bit more up front, but it's really quite worth it. Now when it comes to watering, we tried a couple different things at first, like one of those PVC kits um, that have like a little cup that fills with water and they peck it to get more water into the cup. That didn't seem to work very well because it got dirty. And so what we did is we switched to this kind of um, nipple system and what happens is as the chickens poke this, water comes out and then they drink it up. So, and again, it's really nice because it uses a five gallon bucket. You just need to fill this up every couple weeks or even a month. And there's a, three different nipples on here that they could access water from. Again, we lifted it off the ground and, and we just didn't want it hanging somewhere because there's not that much real estate. So we have it under their little balcony for coming in and out of the coop. So earlier I showed you guys this from the other side, but basically this is the area that's entirely shaded at all times. They like to get under there and dig and just kind of hang out in the shade. And then when it comes to getting in and out of the coop itself, they come out from here onto this little chicken balcony and then they walk down this ramp. So if you have a ramp that's kind of steep, and this is sort of steep, not you know the steepest thing in the world, but the steeper you get, the more often you want to have these little steps for them to climb on. And we lifted it up off on some cinder blocks so it's not just like a totally steep drop. And so they'll just hop onto that cinder block and then just walk up the ramp and tuck themselves in at night. One thing that we want to do is get a automatic coop door for this instead of this. Um, so we have the option of closing them in there when we think it's beneficial. Um, another thing we've discussed is getting a automatic door to this area so they could go in and out of this run. But before we could do that, we have to talk a little bit about securing that area. Um, we have a couple rocks here so they could jump around on and so that they can't dig out the edges. And the other things that we have in here are, um, I believe this one's grit. So they need to eat a little bit of grit to help them break down food. And this one is oyster shells, which gives them calcium. And this is a little chicken swing. Every once in a while, they'll actually jump up here and swing around for fun. You'll notice that there's a lot of little greenery around. Um, whenever we have extra greens or if I'm pruning things, I'll just grab them and throw them in here and they'll eat it and it'll break down and disappear into the dirt in no time. So when we're talking about different chickens, um, one of the nice things about choosing your own varieties is that some varieties are much friendlier than others. The Orpington family seems to be one of the friendliest, which is what Chirp is here. She's a buff Orpington. Um, the other breeds that we have are a Rhode Island Red, a Easter Egger, and a Wyandotte. But every Orpington is apparently much friendlier than most of the other chickens, and the buff Orpingtons in particular are friendly and still lay a decent amount of eggs. So that's kind of, Chirp is definitely the star of the show here. <laughs> She's the friendliest, and she demands cuddles many, many times. She'll, oftentimes she'll bite or peck us so that we pick her up. Like, you can see this right now. <laughs> but Buff Orpington, great chicken for somebody who has kids and they want to hang out with their chickens and maybe have a little snuggle buddy. Um, so that's what I'll say about breeds. And let's talk a little bit about some of the final features in this chicken run. 
If you do decide to build your own chicken coop and run, there are a couple considerations, like for instance, you want the ramp to be at a specific angle, you want the roost and the nesting box height differential to exist because otherwise they won't use the roost or the nesting box for its intended purpose. So we found a website that we use to kind of get that information. I'll go ahead and throw that in the description if you guys want to check that out. Um, I will say that building the coop was worth it in the end because we got exactly what we wanted and it was kind of a fun project overall. Um, but we did use reclaimed wood for a lot of it, which meant that nothing was straight, nothing was true. It was impossible to get anything square and plumb, let's just say that. But it still works and that's great because we were able to divert a lot of wood from the landfill and we were also able to save us a ton of money, which to be honest was our main consideration. Um, luckily we knew somebody who had to redo their deck and their deck had a lot of two by fours involved, so we were able to scrap all that. They were all kind of bowed from having a lot of weight on them, and they had a lot of rusty nails, but overall, definitely worth it. The biggest expense, I would say, is the hardware cloth. It could get quite pricey, but like I said, if you want peace of mind, you want the security in your coop, 100% worth it. Don't even think about it. You're gonna put it up once, and it should last you for, I don't know how long, but it should last you for quite a while. Um, one other little consideration is that when you're doing this kind of structure with the hardware cloth, you don't want to use a handheld staple. First of all, you'll cramp your hand in no time. Second, it's not strong enough to get fully into a lot of the wooden beams. And the other thing is that the staples are quite short. So either go to Home Depot or a hardware store and rent a gas, or sorry, compressor powered staple gun. Or if you know somebody who has one, borrow it from a friend. If you don't have the time or you don't want to develop the skills to kind of build something like this, just buy a coop, but try to make sure that it has some of those important features that I'm going to link in that website included. One thing to consider is that the coop, if you build a fully enclosed run like this, is something that they don't spend that much time in. So you could go ahead and just buy the coop and then build an enclosed run yourself. This was probably the easiest part. It's just a bunch of stapling and basically building a little box. One thing you'll notice is that chickens seem to really like digging around boundaries. So here, that's why we have all these pavers up against the fence line, is that is so that they could actually dig right there, but not dig at the fence and actually create a hole underneath it. So that's why we have all these pavers up along the fence here. Just a few closing thoughts here as I finish up this tour of the chicken coop and run is that we have this huge outdoor run compared to the enclosed run that I showed you guys over there. That's about maybe six by eight feet in total space, um, something around there. Um, actually it might be closer to eight by eight. But anyway, this area is way larger. <laughs> this is something like 50 by 20 feet. I don't even know, but significantly larger space. The chickens love being out here in the sun. They love digging up bugs. And we have a nice little orchard that's gone into the ground. And if you want to see the full video explanation and details behind this chicken orchard, that's over on the Epic Gardening channel. But a couple things I'll say that I didn't mention in that video are that we have a passion fruit here that's going to grow and take over this whole fence line. Passion fruit is a great plant to have with chickens because the chickens love and will eat the leaves from the passion fruit. And if you've grown passion fruit before, you know that that's basically a weed and nothing's gonna stop it from growing. So we'll have plenty of passion fruit leaves for the chickens and plenty of passion fruit for us to eat. The other thing is that I haven't started growing any cover crop in here for the chickens to eat, but that's going to be mixed in. Um, one of the nice things we really like about having chickens is that they're really quite entertaining. So we have this area over here set aside for seating that we could come out here, let the chickens out, and kind of sit down and relax. And the chickens will oftentimes jump up on our laps, uh, just like that, especially Trip, and uh, hang out with us. So it's really nice, it's really relaxing having chickens, honestly, they're really funny and entertaining to watch. And having an area where you could set them up and give them everything they need is um, really quite rewarding. So with that being said, um, final plans are that we're gonna have tree stakes around this whole fence line and bird netting above it so that we can make sure that our chickens are protected from hawks. And also a couple of people commented saying that chickens will, can and will jump over our fences here, but that's never happened. Um, they've gone, they've tried once or twice when they've seen us immediately on the other side and wanted to jump to us, but they can't seem to clear it. All the breeds that we have are quite large, 
So while they, yes, they can fly and they can jump some distance, this is quite a leap for them to make. They don't really have any reason to. All their food, water, and free range areas here, there's nothing kind of compelling them to escape. But if they do try that, our tree stakes with bird netting coming around the top of this will stop that anyway. So maybe that'll come up in a future video, but I think that's all we need to cover today. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that, feel free to give me a thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed, please do, because this chicken orchard is just getting started.